What if the deep roots of Native American ancestry stretched across not only Siberia and Beringia, but further back, into East Asia, through ancient populations we are only now beginning to understand? What if the story of the first Americans didn't begin in Alaska, but instead in a cave near Beijing, China? One of these ancestors may be a single, solitary figure, Tian Yuan Man, whose 40,000-year-old bones whisper secrets about the early branches of the human family tree, and a mysterious skull cap of an ancient female from Mongolia also weaves into this narrative. A team of archaeologists excavating Tianyuan Cave near Zhou Kudian, just southwest of Beijing, uncovered human remains unlike any they had ever seen. The bones were clearly Homo sapiens, modern humans, but incredibly ancient, dating back around 40,000 years. This was the Upper Paleolithic period, when modern humans were still spreading across Eurasia, encountering and interbreeding with Neanderthals and Denisovans. The specimen was dubbed Tianyuan Man, named after the cave that preserved his bones. Though the remains were fragmentary, partial bones of the arm, leg, jaw, and teeth, there was just enough preserved material to extract ancient DNA. And that's when the real mystery began to unfold. When scientists sequenced his genome, Tianyuan Man became the first ancient East Asian whose entire genetic code could be compared to modern and ancient peoples across the world. Tianyuan Man's genome offered one of the clearest windows into the genetic structure of early East Asians. At 40,000 years old, he lived not long after modern humans left Africa and dispersed across the globe. But unlike modern East Asians, Tian Yuan Man's DNA did not neatly fit into present-day Chinese lineages. His genome represented a basal East Eurasian branch, one that had not yet fully differentiated into the East Asian populations we recognize today. But perhaps the most astonishing finding was this. Tian Yuan Man shared more DNA with some present-day Native Americans than he did with later East Asian populations. This wasn't just an incidental match. It was statistically significant and supported by multiple lines of genetic analysis. In fact, a small but measurable proportion of Native American ancestry appeared to descend from a population closely related to Tian Yuan Man, making him a kind of ghost ancestor to the peoples of the New World. To understand Tian Yuan Man's relationship to Native Americans, we need to look at a broader genetic framework. For years, scientists believed that Native Americans derived entirely from a single founding population that crossed the Bering Land Bridge, Beringia, from Siberia into Alaska around 15,000 years ago. These first Americans would then have spread southward, populating the Americas rapidly. However, ancient DNA studies in the last decade have painted a far more complex picture. Geneticists now identify at least two main streams of ancestry in Native Americans, including ancient North Eurasians, a population represented by the 24,000-year-old Malta boy found near Lake Baikal in Siberia. This group contributed significant ancestry to both Native Americans and some Europeans. East Asian-related ancestry is where Tianyuan Man comes in. While not directly ancestral to any single group, his genome shares affinities with this East Asian branch that also contributed to Native American genetic formation. The combination of ancient North Eurasian and East Asian-related lineages gave rise to the ancestors of Native Americans, often referred to as ancient Beringians or the first Americans. In other words, Tian Yuan Man may represent a lineage that fed into the East Asian component of Native American ancestry. Studies using genetic modeling techniques, such as admixture graphs and principal component analysis, have placed Tian Yuan Man close to the basal East Eurasian node on the human family tree. This means that he sits at or near the root of all later East Asians and Southeast Asians. Nevertheless, modern East Asians, 
like Han Chinese, do not descend directly from Tianyuan Man's group. Instead, it appears that East Asia was repopulated or reshaped by later waves of migration, possibly from further north or west, especially from Siberia. Tianyuan Man and his people were either absorbed or replaced, but not before leaving traces in other parts of the world. Recent studies have uncovered tantalizing connections between Tianyuan Man and ancient remains found further north, including the Sulkit skullcap, an enigmatic fossil unearthed in Siberia. While the Salkit skullcap has not yielded a complete genome, partial DNA fragments extracted from the 34,000-year-old specimen was female and shows affinities with both East Asian and early Native American genetic profiles. Intriguingly, these fragments also display a small but notable similarity to Tianyuan Man's genome, suggesting that populations related to him may have extended their reach into Central and Northern Asia. If confirmed, this would reinforce the hypothesis that the genetic stream leading to Native Americans was already forming in East Asia and Siberia long before the migration into Beringia. The Salkit skullcap thus acts as a potential genetic waypoint, a bridge between the ancient East Eurasian populations exemplified by Tianyuan Man and the ancestral Native Americans, who eventually crossed into the New World. When scientists compared Tianyuan Man's genome with that of early Native Americans, such as the Anzic I infant, dated to 12,600 years ago from Montana, and the 10,000-year-old spirit cave mummy from Nevada, they found genetic affinities that suggest a shared ancestor going back to East Asia. Though Tianyuan Man was too early to be a direct ancestor, his people may have been genetically close to those who later migrated northward into Siberia and across Beringia. Geneticists have proposed a Beringian standstill hypothesis to explain the journey into the Americas. According to this model, the ancestors of Native Americans split off from East Asians, possibly around 26,000 years ago, and became isolated in Beringia, possibly for thousands of years, before entering the Americas. During this isolation, their genome diverged significantly from East Asians, but some of their ancestry still bore the fingerprint of populations like Tianyuan Man's. After this long pause, as the glaciers began to recede, these ancient people migrated south through an ice-free corridor, or perhaps along the Pacific coast. The archaeological and genetic evidence increasingly supports a coastal migration around 16,000 years ago, followed by rapid expansion into Central and South America. What is striking is that the Tianyuan-like ancestry persists, albeit in small amounts in these later populations. It shows up not only in early North Americans like Anzic, but also in the genomes of South American hunter-gatherers from Brazil, Peru, and Chile. This supports the idea that the East Asian ancestors of Native Americans carried with them genetic threads that stretched back to Tianyuan Man's time. One of the most revealing aspects of Tianyuan Man's genome is how distinct it is from later East Asians. He lacked genetic markers found in modern Han Chinese, which suggests that the East Asian gene pool underwent substantial shifts after 40,000 years ago. For example, later migrations from Northeast Asia, including those associated with the Jomon people of Japan or the ancient Tungusic and Siberian groups, appear to have reshaped the region's genetic landscape. Tianyuan Man also had a small amount of Neanderthal DNA, about 2.6%, similar to other early Eurasians, but he showed no signs of Denisovan ancestry, which is particularly interesting because Denisovan DNA is present in modern Southeast Asians, Australians, and even some East Asians. This suggests that the Denisovan admixture occurred after Tianyuan Man's time, perhaps among later populations who moved through Southeast Asia. Tianyuan's genome therefore captures a moment in time 
before the full complexity of Eurasian population dynamics played out, before the waves of admixture, migration, and replacement that would define the next 40,000 years. His DNA is a window into a pristine branch of the human tree, one that contributes to Native American ancestry, but not directly to modern East Asians. Interestingly, some researchers have found that Tianyuan Man shares affinities not only with Native Americans, but also with modern Southeast Asians and even indigenous Australians. This suggests that his population may have been widespread across parts of East and Southeast Asia before later population shifts. It also raises the question, was there a broader, now-vanished East Asian population that played a foundational role in multiple regions? Could Tianyuan Man's people have been part of an early wave that moved south, east, and north into regions as diverse as Siberia, Alaska, and Australia? While these questions remain open, the genetic traces of Tianyuan-like ancestry do appear in multiple places, suggesting that his kind may have had a much wider range than the single cave in which his bones were found. Tianyuan Man complicates our understanding of human migrations. He reminds us that the peopling of the Americas was not a simple journey across a frozen land bridge, but a process shaped by multiple migrations, long periods of isolation, and deep ancestral threads stretching back tens of thousands of years. He also challenges older models that treated East Asians and Native Americans as genetically unified blocks. Instead, we now see a mosaic, layers of ancestry, some ancient, some recent, and some surprising. Moreover, Tianyuan Man stands as a powerful symbol of the human journey, though he lived 40,000 years ago in a time of mammoths and saber-toothed cats. His genome carries echoes that still resonate today, in the blood of children in Brazil, in the DNA of First Nations, and in the complex ancestral maps drawn by modern geneticists. Tianyuan Man is a ghost from the deep past, his bones dug from a cave, his story told not by words, but by molecules. And yet, he is very much a part of our living story. His genetics tie him to the ancestors of people who would later brave the glaciers of Siberia, cross into the New World, and give rise to the rich diversity of Native American cultures across two continents. As genetic techniques improve and more ancient genomes are sequenced, we may one day find the missing pieces that connect Tianyuan Man more directly to the peoples of Beringia and beyond. Until then, he remains a solitary but crucial figure, a silent witness to one of humanity's greatest migrations. He is not forgotten. In the DNA of the first Americans, he still walks. <laughs>